Good morning. It is Saturday the 27th and I did not plan on doing a vlog this morning, but I've been wanting to do a vlog and my brother gave me this camera um, to borrow that already has the mic on it and it's so much smaller than the one I've been using to film. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, let's pull out the camera. Let's do a vlog today. It's a leg day. I've got a lot of stuff going on. Trav is not um, here right now and so I feel like it's a good day to film. Just bring y'all along with me. But I feel like I need to do start to finish. Like, y'all need to see the full routine. So, I did sleep in a little. I went to bed at, like, 1 last night. And I wake up at 7, 6, 7, usually during the week. And my body clock this morning, like, I think I, my mind's just racing. But I was wide awake. And I laid there and I was like, you're not going to go back to sleep. So, let's, like, get up and start the day. And part of it is because I'm hungry. Uh, my food is high right now, but I um, I usually try to finish my dinner at like 7.30 and last night I didn't go to bed, like I said, till 1, so I was freaking hungry. I was ready for my little morning routine um, and what else? So, yeah, so I'm going to fill y'all in because there's a lot to fill you in on. One being the fact that I have a freaking ring on my finger. Um, but I haven't made a, vi a YouTube video in so long. So anyways, I'm wide awake. I'm like, let's get up. Let's do the morning routine. I weighed in. I actually came back down. I had crumble two nights ago. Um, and I said I wasn't going to do it. And then I love, it's like a bonding thing with me and Trav. Like we like to try the flavors. So I did it. And, uh. Honestly, weight hasn't really fluctuated, which is nice. Like, my body handles food really well, and I think that's why it's a little harder for me sometimes to say no to things, because I'm like, it's not going to do anything to me. I'm just going to process that shit and go have a great lift the next day. So, anyways, um, had a good weigh-in this morning. I feel really good. I feel really tight. We've got legs this morning. Um, I'm going to go destroy my legs today. But also... I, we put an offer on a house and which is super exciting, actually an investment property. So I've got to go do all my tax stuff to get that sent in so we can get the official approval for the loan. So I think I'm kind of just like stressed about that. So I woke up and I'm like, let me go get that shit done so I can go hit legs. And I'm having a girl's night tonight, which is super exciting. Love a good girl's night. So that's what we're going to do. I'm not going to show you all the full, like, we'll get ready with me. Y'all don't need to see all that. But I'm going to brush my teeth, go downstairs, show you my little morning routine um, that I do every morning. This doesn't change just because it's Saturday. This is what I do, like, every single day. I love it so much. And then we'll go to the motherfucking gym and train. Okay, so in the morning, I usually just like to throw on some sweats and go work, but like, you girls looking rocked up today. I don't know what's in the water, but like, shape is shaping. I'm not, I'm not mad about that. We love a good morning, skinny. So... Okay, so this is my routine pretty much every single morning. I get up at 6 a.m. I come downstairs. I have an RX bar just to hold me over until my breakfast. Um, and then I also like to eat something before I drink my coffee. So I'll have my RX bar and then um, have my tea, take my fasted supplements, all those good things. And then I make my morning coffee. And then about 9 o'clock is when I will have my breakfast. So these are the two things that I'll put in my coffee in and out of prep. 
This super creamer I really like because it uses MCT oil rather than a sunflower oil or any type of other processed oil that's more inflammatory towards the body that most creamers have. And then I also put these sweet drops in it, which is pure stevia. They come in a ton of different flavors, um, but they're zero calorie and you can add them to other things like oats and stuff, but you literally don't need much. A few drops is going to go a long way. Um, and then a little bit of creamer as well. And those I typically don't track just because I don't feel like I need to since they are so low calorie. This is the breakfast that I eat pretty much every single morning. I do gluten-free oats with berries and flaxseed. Um, they're frozen berries, so I'll put them in the oats and then put that in the microwave together so it kind of soaks in and then add the flaxseed on top. And then this morning, usually I do eggs, um, egg whites with a whole egg and um, what else do I do with that by itself? But this morning, since I was going to work out right after I ate breakfast, I added the ground beef for more protein and then I also added some sweet potatoes for more carbs. So I will show you how I track this. Um, I use an app called Carbon Diet Coach. My fitness pal is fine, but personally, I just like this app a lot better. It's a lot cleaner. I do pay like $10.99 a month, so it's not free. Um, but again, that's just like my personal preference. So here's me adding everything in that's already in my recent log, so I don't have to look it up every single time. When it comes to how I log my meats, I know that when I cook meat, it typically drops about 30% in weight. So I will go ahead and log everything raw, but I do weigh it cooked. So if I log five ounces of raw ground beef, then I'm gonna weigh 3.5 ounces because I know from just cooking in the past how much it drops. There are cooked versions in my fitness pal or these different tracking apps. You just have to be careful because depending on how you cook it is also gonna determine how much weight it loses. So I would say the biggest thing is just stay consistent with whatever method you use, um, but know there are differences between cooked and uncooked foods and their weights. So I like to have about 25% of my carbs both pre and post workout. So with my total intake being at 280 right now, that would put me at about 70 grams both pre and post workout. Um, so since it is later in the day on a Saturday, I did have more before I trained and the RX bar obviously has some as well, which wasn't a part of my pre-workout meal. Um, but then I'll bring my post workout meal with me to the gym. That way I can eat it immediately after. Anyways, uh, this is like one of the only reasons I bought this car is because it has nine JBL speakers and this shit gets so loud. So on the way to the gym, like I just have to crank up music, get fired up. Uh, but anyways, ate breakfast. It is 11.50, so usually I would eat breakfast at 9, and then I'd have my next meal at 12, and then I'd go train after that, or I'd train at 9, like, right after breakfast, but it's Saturday, so I usually kind of take the morning slow. I don't have anything to do today, which is really nice, um, and I'm most productive in the morning, so I finished all my taxes. Um, I guess I'll tell y'all since, like, Y'all are on the YouTube, like y'all are clearly invested. Me and Travis, so we've been living with my mom and because I'm self-employed, you have to have two years of tax payments in order to get approved for a loan. At least that's like the easiest way to do it. So t January 29th, Monday, um, the e-filing for the IRS for 2023 taxes will open up. So I've been trying to get everything ready so we can file those and get approved, but we actually found a place that we really like and we put an offer down, but it's obviously a conditional approval because we can't get the approval yet because I haven't filed my taxes so I was getting all of that in order um, which is a pain in the ass but I did get QuickBooks um, so moving forward it shouldn't be as bad anyways that was all just like irrelevant but that's why I'm so late um, and I look like doo-doo but honestly in the morning like if I go so I'll do my skincare routine at night put my moisturizer on and then in the morning that moisturizer is so thick, it's usually like still on my face. My face still feels pretty hydrated. And I'm not going to wash my face and put on makeup and go to the gym just to sweat it off. Like I have no one to impress. Uh, that takes too much time. If I was doing like a shoot or something cool, but like y'all are going to see the real raw me. Like there's no need to do all the extra stuff for YouTube. So that's why we're looking like this and I broke out I'm not really sure why I broke out this camera does kind of make my skin look way better than it is though I'm kind of vibing with it uh I don't know why my skin broke out obviously it's hormonal I think it's because I've been wearing makeup I did not use I've been trying not to use my brush every night 
to um, exfoliate like every other day, but because I'm wearing makeup, I've got to exfoliate in the evenings or else it just, it makes me break out. So that's what we're doing. Um, I was in the mood for pre-workout today, but I did want a little second cup of coffee and my favorite cup, be a badass with a good ass. My grandma actually got with this for me, which is love. So Saturdays I usually go to Alpha Land because they have such better equipment for leg days compared to the gyms around here and I just really want to get a good glute session. So right now I'm training legs three times a week um, and today is more of like a glute focused session versus my other two days are hamstring glutes, quad glutes, um, but glutes, glutes, glutes because that is my feedback. Like it's literally what they told me to do is just grow your ass. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, my hips been super fucking tight from sitting so I've been stretching the shit out of that and it's actually feeling pretty good today So I never know what kind of day I'm gonna have with my sessions. I never know if I'm gonna get good glute activation So we're gonna figure the fuck out um, But yeah, I'm excited. I'm gonna go in have a good session. This is week two of off season I'm feeling good feeling like a lean mean machine food is high. I just housed What was that like probably? Well, it was 100 carb total. I think 80 carb in my breakfast meal. I usually do 80 carb pre and post workout, 25% of my total carb intake pre and post workout, and my carbs are at 280 right now. So last off season, they got up to 450, but I was on birth control and I was an in person trainer. So output obviously is a lot lower. I sit way more because I'm working on the computer. I have to be so intentional about my steps. Um, and I'm just dealing with a new, new body, new hormones. Um, new metabolism just the way my body is functioning and the chemical process that processes that are going on internally are a lot different than when I was on birth control so this prep is going to be very different I can see cardio being a lot higher food being a lot lower just because of those things I just discussed um, but we're just gonna find out so right now it's really just grow 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 eat and fucking lift heavy put on tissue for the next 14 weeks and then we'll see what we're looking like but yeah let's go get this session okay so i'm going to voice over this entire workout because it's just going to make it so much easier but when i get to the gym i am really really big on warming up so i will walk on the treadmill or get on the elliptical for 10 minutes just to get blood flow get my mind right get a little sweat going and then i will go over and do a dynamic warm-up um really loosening up my hips my hamstrings my quads um, just getting ready to train essentially. And then after that, I am going to do a glute activation, um, little warm up just because for me, it's really hard for me to feel my glutes when I train. So I found that getting really, really good blood flow prior to training and getting a really good pump in my glutes allows me to feel them more when I am training. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm doing these side hip raises as well as some banded glute bridges just to get them nice and fired up. And then I'm also doing some banded abductions and I will put the entire workout down in the comments so you can read it and do it yourself. So here I am starting out with one plate on hip thrust. This is going to be my first movement. Um, and I usually use a band just to get, again, good glute activation, get everything warm. Um, really, really focusing on not creating any arc in my back during this movement. So keeping my core nice and tight, driving through my entire foot, um, making sure that my spine is in a neutral position and thinking about keeping my hips tucked. So whenever I am driving upwards, I really want to utilize my glutes and not my back or quads or hamstrings. So notice how at the top of the movement, my knees go in line with my ankles and that helps prevent me from using any extra quad or hamstring during the movement. So this is me loading up a little more weight, getting into my working sets. Um, for me, when just utilizing my glutes. My glutes are not that strong alone, so this is pretty freaking heavy. And also, this box is slightly low for me. You really want the box in line with your knees. That way, when you're at the top, you can be in a straight line. Um, so you can see when I do get to extension, my hips don't come all the way up. And then obviously, as I get deeper in the set, I'm not gonna be able to get to full hip extension because um, that weight is heavy. But that is one thing that you really wanna look out for is in the first few reps, are you getting to full hip extension? Because if you're not getting to full hip extension in the first few reps, you probably need to drop the weight. Um, 
and make sure you can at least get a few full range quality reps before increasing. So this is my top weight for this movement. I usually do about two working sets, not including any of my warm up sets. Um, and then after that, we will do a either drop set or rest pause set or some type of burnout set. So when I do get to these heavier sets, I take the band off my knees as well, um, just because that does force me to have to drop the weight and I'm really focused on load today. Um, so I took the band off and then I'm cranking out these at my highest weight. And as you can see, again, I cannot get all the way up. This weight gets really, really heavy really quickly, um, and it's hard with hip thrust because you really have no leverage. It's just how hard you can squeeze your glutes. <laughs> so um, that's the top set. And then this is my burnout set. So typically for my um, burnout set, I will do a lower weight and then drop set it. So as you can see, I took some of the weight off because the other set was just a little too heavy for me. I'm getting much better range of motion here. And then once I hit failure, I'm going to go ahead and drop those 25 pound plates and do a set till failure immediately afterwards. And that's going to be what you call a drop set. Okay, next movement is a hip bridge. I do get a lot of questions on this and how I set it up, so I thought I would add this video in here to show y'all. It is a very awkward setup. You kind of have to pull the bar over you and then like wiggle your way forward um, to get your butt as close to that platform as you can. That's the key here. You don't want to be too far away from the platform or you're not going to be able to get full extension. My rear delts are going absolutely nuts in this video. I am not mad about that at all. Um, but that's besides the point. So again, getting your glutes as close to that platform as you can, getting the bar on your pelvic area. And then from here, you are going to just drive your hips up like you would a typical hip thrust um, and try and keep your torso and midsection as straight as possible. So again, going down and up once I reach the bottom without releasing that tension at the bottom. You want to keep your glutes contracted the entire time um, and keep your core tight. You kind of have to press against that bar. That way it doesn't roll down on top of you. But as you can see here, I was not able to do many with this top weight. I already did some warm-up sets prior to this, but this was my top set. So um, I'm going to crank out as many as I can until I cannot lift my glutes off the floor anymore. And then that is going to be a top set completed. Okay, so next up is lightweight sumo deads. And the reason that I keep the weight so light on these is because I want to eliminate any erector usage. So when you are at the bottom of this movement, if your hips and glutes come up first, then you're immediately losing the tension on those glutes, which is obviously not what we want to do. So when you're down at the bottom, you want to drop your butt as low as you can. And when you come up, you want to come up as if it's a squat. You want your upper body and your lower body to stay in a straight line and come up at the same time. You don't want to see hips come up, then upper body come up because again that's when we lose the glute contraction and we incorporate our lower back um so keeping the weight light kind of allows you to do this because you are eliminating a lot of other muscle usage you're having to solely rely on your glutes um and obviously quads and hamstrings are going to come to play come into play a little bit in this movement but again the goal is to just really utilize your glutes to drive that weight up so think butt down drive the knees out um, and act like you're squeezing like a credit card or something in between your cheeks and that should automatically pull you upward so I did do a few more sets after this my camera actually died um, and I really focused on my form because this was not my best set but y'all get a good idea and understanding of what I'm trying to do here Okay, so next up we have reverse lunges. I really like this machine or a Smith machine for reverse lunges because you do not have to worry about your balance or holding dumbbells or anything like that. Um, and you can really just focus on the task at hand So and the mind-muscle connection. So we're going to do one leg at a time. 
with the front leg you really want to focus on keeping that knee in line with the ankle as you go down that's going to keep all of the tension on the glute and then i can slightly hinge forward again to get a greater stretch in the glute so with the back leg you want to um, minimize the usage with that back leg obviously you're going to have to use it a little bit but the goal is to minimize that usage so reach back as far as you can um, and then really control yourself down really try and focus on just using that front leg and then on the way up squeeze your working glute so in this case that would be my left cheek um, at the bottom to drive me forward and that's going to help you keep that glute engagement um, and really eliminate any quad or hamstring engagement in this movement obviously it's going to come into play this is a lunge but our main goal with this form right here is to utilize the glutes so we're going to do about eight to ten reps here um, and then switch legs and do the other side. After that, we're gonna finish off with some hyperextensions. So there are multiple different ways to do these. I have found that keeping my upper body fairly straight really helps me engage more of my upper glute at the top. Um, and as long as my core is nice and tight, I'm really eliminating those erectors. So you can also do this with a rounded upper body. You can see up here my back, my upper back is rounded, but not my lower back. So you can round your lower back and that's going to help you eliminate any erector usage as well if you feel like you're not able to brace your core enough to eliminate it with this form. Um, and that's going to get a lot more lower glutes. So I have found keeping my core and back a little bit straighter allows me to target more upper glute at the top. And then when I round my back, I'm able to target a little bit more lower glute um, and glute max. So you can try both ways. Here, I'm keeping my upper body super, super straight. And again, that's targeting a little more of that upper glute. So this is usually a finisher for me just because if I do this at the beginning of my workout, I don't get really good glute engagement, but I found if I get a nice pump and then I go into these, um, I'm able to isolate them a whole lot more. The biggest thing is keep your legs nice and straight and then really try and relax them. So putting your hands on your glutes is a good way to help with the mind muscle connection just so you can actually feel the muscle working but you really want to think about just relaxing your lower body completely and then squeezing those glutes as hard as you can at the bottom and allowing that to pull your upper body up so as you can see here i start to grab my glutes just to make sure i'm getting good mind muscle connection um and then squeezing them as hard as I can to naturally pull my upper body upward. And then you can do these with weight as well, but I found towards the end of my workout, I really don't need weight because they honestly burn enough without it um, and they're hard enough on their own. I'm gonna go home, shower. Me and my mom are gonna go to Costco to go get some stuff in bulk. So I'll show y'all what I get from Costco, show you the rest of my meals for today. And then I also want to talk a little bit about PEDs because it's a big topic. I'm very open about it and I just wanna be very transparent with y'all in regards to my plans and PEDs. So we'll get into that. I'm almost out of gas and I'm gonna go charge my camera and then we'll go from there. So, it's the next morning. Shocker. This is why I don't vlog, but I'm like, you know what? Just fucking make the content, put it out there because people want to people want to see the realness, you know? So, <laughs> yesterday I was just in a hurry when I got home. I went and bought a fire pit cuz it's cold and we literally just chilled by the fire last night all freaking night, which was really nice. Um, and so Sundays I've changed to my rest days. I was training legs on Sunday because no one's really at the gym But I started going to church again in the mornings and I just kind of want to vibe and have Sundays be my chill day. So um, 
it's my rest day, but I still go to the gym and I usually have been walking for an hour. I have two rest days a week, so I usually go walk for an hour because I'm so sedentary during the day. I'm just, I used to be an in-person trainer and I got to get my steps in. So I'll do that and then I stretch really, really well. Um, and then I do abs and calves because those are just two things that I really neglect. And I don't train abs like to build the muscle i do planks to help develop my internal core muscles just to help me with more engagement it's going to help me in my posing um and also help with my posture i have a very very bad anterior pelvic tilt and my core is very weak because i've just never trained core um and so just trying to develop that strength again internally and that way it helps with my posture and helps with my training so and then i have zero calves if you've seen my calves i literally have pencil legs so I told myself this year I was going to actually try and see if we could do something about that. So that's what I'm going to go do. And then Travis finally comes home today. Thank God I've been missing him. He's been gone all week. Um, and then I'll actually show you all the rest of my meals today. So all I've had is breakfast, which y'all already saw what I ate for breakfast. So I'll show you my other four meals. And that way you can kind of get a good idea of what my day's looking like. But it's... 11:20 right now so again usually on the weekends i get a late start to the morning because i don't have to get up at 6 a.m to start working um but yeah i'm gonna go get this workout in and then actually get back with y'all okay so this is a little post-workout meal we have some cooked jasmine rice some italian cut green beans and chicken breast and then the chiefs game is going on so y'all already know we got to watch that and see Patty get to the Super Bowl. Big cheese fan. All right, and then also with this, I do these gluten-free brown sugar maple oats from Nature's Path um, and some almond butter with that, and that's part of my post-workout meal to get those 80 carbs in. And then here is another meal later on in the day that's chicken, rice, and green beans again. Um, and then I always have a poppy with these just in the middle of the day to kind of curve my cravings. I really, really like these. Um, they have decent macros, they taste good, and there's no like artificial sweeteners or anything in that. And then here is all my lovely chicken breast I just cooked in bulk for the week. Um, so we've got that on deck. And then I always have a Lauren's cookie every day. I usually have like half a bite of the cookie dough after my lunch and dinner to keep me satisfied. Um, macros aren't bad, it's like 120 calories a cookie and the ingredients are just so clean. There's really no um, just bullshit in them. And so I don't feel guilty. They're gluten-free, dairy-free, um, all the things. So then for dinner on Sunday night, I made some air fried salmon and then I forgot what those little beans are called. They're some Japanese bean. Um, and then I use coconut liquid aminos instead of soy sauce since it's gluten-free. And I added some rice and avocado in there. I kind of like to change it up on Sunday just to make it a little different. My weekend vlog is over. It's now Monday and I'm back at the gym. Gonna go hit legs. Um, this was super sporadic, but I feel like it's raw and real. And this is kind of how my life goes. So we'll get better at this, but at least I'm actually vlogging. Because I do want to share my story, my journey, my day to day, like people, some people are interested and find that entertaining and helpful. So any information I can provide that is helpful, even if I don't feel like it's helpful, um, I wanna do. So I will get better. Now I do wanna talk about before I close this out, PEDs because I get a lot of questions on PEDs, when they should be used, um, what's the purpose, side effects, things that I've used, stuff like that. So I don't wanna go into a whole 10 minute tangent, but I'm just gonna kinda run down and give y'all my opinion and things that I do as a coach with my athletes as well as myself. So um first off i am mostly talking in terms of uh bikini competitors other divisions especially like males and stuff i'm not super versed in um so we are gonna kind of just talk about a very generalized discussion of peds but that is performance enhancing drugs for those of you that are new and may not know. Um, okay, now I compete in the NPC slash IFBB, which is the amateur and pro league. 
um, of bodybuilding and it is a non-regulated federation meaning they do not test you for anything so you're gonna have natural athletes there you're gonna have enhanced athletes there it's a mix if you want to compete in a natural show that you are gonna be tested you can totally do that but the MPC is going to be the biggest federation the most competitive federation the most fun federation and the federation majority of people care about it's kind of like football with the nfl like the nfl is really the only federation league that people really pay attention to so i'm not saying people don't respect and look up to natural leagues however just because you're natural doesn't mean you can't compete in the npc ifbb i actually turned pro naturally no one believes that i got accused my entire prep of steroids but i really don't give a fuck because i know i turned pro naturally which is kind of cool um but it really comes down to genetics like that is essentially what can make or break you um in bodybuilding bodybuilding is a very aesthetic sport it's how you look and you can only change your structure so much like some people i'm not tall enough to play professional basketball as a woman and i can't do anything about that i could take all the drugs in the world i can't do anything about that same with bodybuilding some people just are not cut out for bodybuilding drugs can help your genetics you can get to a better place with peds but it's you get to a certain point where like you're either cut for it or not i will never be miss olympia i don't have the body type and physique for miss olympia my muscle bellies aren't full like the olympians like i just it is what it is and it's kind of something you have to accept um to an extent i mean you know, like I said, you can get pretty fucking far, but at the same time, like, you either have it or you don't. So I happen to have it to get me to the pro league. Now I've lifted for the past nine years, so it's not like I haven't put in the work. But at the same time, like, my gen I have great genetics. I was able to get super, super lean naturally. Um, and I had the muscle behind me to where I kept my fullness. So that's that. Um, moving forward, I did start peds so my first off season after i turned pro i cycled anavar twice i did two 12-week cycles or i did a 12-week then a 10-week cycle um and then i stopped and did my whole gut protocol which all of my issues happened before anavar it had nothing to do with anavar the only side effect i had from that was some back acne about eight weeks in literally the only side effect my strength was incredible um my sleep was incredible my recovery was incredible um i felt great no mood swings like i was perfectly fine on it i honestly did really really well on that and i put on a good amount of tissue um but then like i said i went into my hormone gut phase now that all of that is clear, I did just start another cycle of Anavar because I am back in an off season. So that's why I said this will be about 14 weeks. We'll probably do, run it anywhere from 12 to 14 weeks, um, depending on how I'm looking. And I'm not going to give dosages or anything like that because, again, I don't want you going out there and copying this. This is just simply what I'm doing. And you can kind of take this with a grain of salt and discuss it with your coach please 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 either dm me or talk to a coach who is trained who is a professional who has worked with plenty of women talk to those clients so many coaches will put their athletes on peds just for the fuck of it if your coach does not run blood work with you before putting you on peds run if your coach does not answer your questions regarding peds run like there are so many i'm not gonna get into that but i'm just saying please 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 be cautious because so many people want to get on PEDs and they are not ready for them. They think they're a magic pill and they're not. You, in my opinion, as a coach, I will not put an athlete on anything or recommend anything unless that athlete has proven to me that their training is on point, their nutrition is on point, and they're at an age where their hormones are pretty stable and regulated. They're not having a bunch of fluctuations or growth. I'm never going to put like a 19 year old on a PED because they're still developing naturally. They're going to have so much more growth just naturally as they age than they are through a PED. There's no sense in potentially screwing up your hormones over you know trying to develop quicker in bodybuilding when time can do that you're still developing as a teenager so for me the reason i did it is because i'm at a point in my career where i have trained my ass off for the past nine or ten years my lifestyle's on point i am a pro and the muscle mass that i need to put on i might be able to put on in the next five years um, but PEDs are going to knock down that timeline. And so for me, like, 
that makes sense. I'm at a point in my career where, where, you know, your body, I don't necessarily believe, well, I do believe there's a genetic ceiling. I think you get to a point, like for me, my glutes are very, very hard for me to grow. It's hard to put tissue there. Um, obviously, yes, if I train my ass off for the next five years, could I get there? Sure. But for me, like, I want kids soon. I'm 24. I want kids when I'm around 30. I don't want to spend my entire 20s trying to get to a point that I may or may not get to when I could add PEDs in and help me get there a little bit quicker with very minimal risk. So as a bikini competitor, it doesn't take much at all. Now, if you're talking wellness, figure, women's physique, that's a different ball game. I'm not going to get into that. That's going to be a whole different route that you're going to have to go, different side effects and sacrifices you're going to have to be willing to make. Um, but again, it also comes down to your genetics. Some people don't need much. Some people don't need anything at all. There are plenty of successful pros um, in the bikini world that I believe are natural. Now, a lot of them lie about it. Um, you're not always going to know what someone's on. There are a lot of people who are on things who look like they are natural because they literally don't know how to train and they think, you know, just because I take PEDs, I'm going to magically get jacked. It's not how it works um, at all. So you still have to put in the work. Um, but I, I definitely think it's a tool that can be utilized and be extremely helpful if you have the right scenario um, when looking at timelines if your body is in a good place to incorporate things like that but i don't think it is for everyone and in, i don't think it should be your go-to um, i think you just need to be working with a coach that cares me as a female obviously i'm going to put my female clients health um, first because that's something that i prioritize with all my girls and it's not worth screwing up over bodybuilding you know and we have such such a long time as young females to bodybuild we don't need to throw things in when they're unneeded so that's my take on that I'm sure y'all still have a lot of questions because that was kind of just a summary so you can feel free to DM me on Instagram it's at Kayla Ashworth underscore and I will answer what questions I can but I will not tell you what to take um, or how much to take or how much I'm taking because again I want you to work with a coach and do it the right way because it's just not worth long-term repercussions you know it's more so about the timeline that you take things and how much you take versus what you're taking so that's that thank you guys for watching if you're still at the end of this video or if you just came on this video for this last little segment um, let me know in the comments what y'all want to see in the future I hope to provide more information and more just like raw realness of what it's like being a full-time competitor and online coach if you have business questions um, I'm really bad about answering questions on social media because it's kind of like my last go-to during the day like I do my client work first and then I have my own training and my own shit I got to take care of and then I go on social media to answer stuff but I do want to I do want to get better because y'all are the reason that I am in the place I am today and I want to give back and give as much free information as possible so that's that um like subscribe comment i think that's what the youtubers say um i want to get really good at this but it's gonna take some time so everyone's everyone always looks back and they're like well yeah i started with my one camera and myself just posting random shit and then you know you got somewhere but if you don't start then i'm never gonna get to the end right so here we are first video of 2024 if we could crank out like two a month that would be nuts that'd be way better than what i'm what i've been doing so all right 